Testament lesson this morning is found in the book of Deuteronomy, <laughs> chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a miraculous sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder of which he has spoken takes place, and he says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. It is the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commandments and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. And then we turn to the book of John. from John 14, verses 23 and 24. And Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear these words that you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. And here ends the scripture reading for the morning. And may the Lord bless them to our use and to our understanding. Amen. Amen. As you can tell by the bulletin, uh, I've entitled today's message as be prepared. The phrase be prepared is familiar to most of us because of either the Girl Scout or Boy Scout mottos, or because we try to cover most of our actions in life so we don't have surprises or even failures. Or, like I recently heard when one mother was admonishing her children to behave, and their reply was, no promises, Ma, no promises. However, the fact remains that as we often try to be prepared, for what we are doing, whether it's baking or cooking or paint, uh, painting outside and all the ingredients for everything has to be there. The stuff for the food dishes, uh, the brushes and paint and things that you need to do your repairs or whatever you're doing. You have to have all these things in order to get the work done. Some of us prepare for trips or dinners uh, or going to a show or shopping and again you'll get the idea. The real world now uh, is in a, you know, always in a stew of one thing or another, but most prominent now is another list that is an end of life type list. Uh, medical wills, as you wish, uh, type of service you may or may not want at church. So be prepared. Decisions are vital. And I think that as we Christians, we must give thought to the end of our physical life and where we will spend eternity. Many of us have been taught that Jesus loves us, and most of us learned that song in Sunday school. Remember, Jesus loves us? Mm -hmm. Have you sung it in a while? We have a chance to sing it with music this morning, so let's try. <laughs> Remember the line that says, I am weak, but he is strong. 
It takes strength, physical, spiritual. It's strength that we need to live as God commands. We have the Holy Bible both as our guide and reference book, but only if we use it. Sitting on a shelf, uh-uh, it's not going to work. Pick it up, look at it. You don't have to read from cover to cover, verse to verse. And I've said this before, just let it fall open, or if there's some particular thing you're looking for, look in the back of the Bible. Usually there's a place that lists uh, different subjects and topics, and you can go from there. But if we don't use it, it's of no use as a reference or a guide for church, or religion, or belief. But only when we use it, it helps us to be prepared. We need to take an oath. Now, an oath is a promise in which one asks God to witness that something is true. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 8, part 1 says, I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declared the Sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Do you know that the name or word Ezekiel means God is strong? Also, that the word oath translates into a promise in which one asks God to witness that something is true. Several organizations today have their members declare an allegiance or say an oath to that specific organization so that the members will be in accord with each other and will be able to function together, hopefully for the good of the group. And as many of you might or might not know, today is Girl Scout Sunday, and no, I am not selling Girl Scout cookies. So uh, if you need anything, I'll talk to you later. But we, the Girl Scout organization, have an oath and a promise and laws, rules that each member has promised to live by or to at least try. We all know that when we try to live up to things, sometimes we're not successful, but that does not prevent us from trying again. So if you'll bear with me and just listen as I read what the Girl Scout promise is, on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help other people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. And the law is, I will do my best to be fair and honest, friendly, helpful, considerate, caring, courageous, and strong, and responsible for what I say and do to respect and respect myself and others, and to respect authority, to use resources wisely, and to make the place a better and to make the world a better place and to be a sister to every other Girl Scout. Now, we can change that because it really follows pretty much what we want to do. On our honor, we will try to serve God and the world to help other people at all times and to live by God's commandments and the lessons that Jesus has taught us. And the law is, I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect my other, myself and others, to respect authority, to use resources wisely, and to make the world a better place, that knowing my belief in Christ and following him, I will have eternal life. Now, few changes that I made you picked up on when we're talking about the world and not just the country and we're talking about Ten Commandments and not the Girl Scout laws. The last line of the law, uh, of the, uh, law will change to that we are knowing our belief in Christ and following we will have eternal life. We must all realize that times and people change, sometimes for the better, but not always. And it's in these not so good times that we are really put to the test. We might have said that something a little bit unkind to someone, and then we should seek their forgiveness from that person and from God. We could have neglected to lend a helping hand, or words of encouragement, or joy for different people. We 
each without exception could write our own personal list of what we could have, should have, but didn't do. So let's begin here and now, resolving to improve these unfavorable characteristics that we have. And you might not want to own up to it, but there's not one person in this room that doesn't have something unfavorable. And we seek God's forgiveness for these things. And we're going to call upon God and share the difficulties that we are going through. Keep in mind that God is the key person in our lives and that he loves us so much and he gave his only son to die for us that we might be forgiven and have eternal life. And I saw a plaque the other day that said that if God did that for us, can't we forgive somebody for something that they have done or said? And that time and that place for eternal life is coming to each one of us. So be prepared.